Hey foodie, walk on. Let's make some piri piri chicken. So you've gotten one of these ancho chili peppers for free. You're welcome. It's a thank you for getting my recipe kit. So we're gonna be using that ancho chili in this recipe. First thing you're gonna do is carefully remove that stem. Using a pair of tongs, you're going to place the chili onto a hot pan with no fat. So no oil, no butter, nothing. Just a hot pan and you're going to toast this pepper until the skin becomes nice and hard and the pepper becomes really fragrant. Once you see smoke start to come up from the pepper, it's almost ready and the skin is nice and charred enough that we can make our powder. Remove the chili from the pan and place it into your mortar and pestle. You hear that crunch? That's the sound you want to get once this is fully ready to make our ancho chili powder. Look at you, foodie, making your own chili powder. Now that's impressive. The next thing you will need is a clean jar with a lid because now it's time to make piri piri rub. Piri Piri traditionally has a lot of paprika in it. So we're using two types of paprika to make this rub. We're using regular paprika, plain old paprika. And we're also using smoked paprika. Remember that chili powder you just made, foodie? That's going in here as well. So scoop up a good bit of that and throw it into your jar. Whatever's left over, you can use on anything. Fish, shrimp, chicken, you name it. Ancho chili powder is really, really great. Now everything but the kitchen sink is also going into this jar. We've got white pepper, we've got cumin, We've got coriander, we've got oregano. There are so many different herbs and spices in this mix. You're going to absolutely love it. Stay with me foodie, we're almost done putting in some brown sugar, and then the next thing that's gonna go in is some onion powder and some garlic powder. Look at that. So there's our onion powder and then our garlic powder. You're gonna cover that lid and you're gonna give this a good shake. This is your Piri Piri rub. Foodie, you just made your own spice blend. McCormick who? And you're gonna be able to make piri piri from this several times over. Put it on chicken, put it on fish, put it on shrimp. Now let's get started on this chicken. You're gonna start with a whole chicken. The first thing you're gonna do is remove the tail. Split the chicken down the backbone and then cut right across that breast to give you two halves. Now that your chicken is in two halves, you're gonna try your best to remove as many of those hairs on the skin as you can. Remove the excess fat and excess skin that's down around the backbone of the chicken. Also remove the inner parts of the chicken that's in the back. Those are the chicken lungs. We don't wanna eat that. Take those out, use your knife again, to try to get as much of the hairs from the chicken skin as you can. This is a long process, but I do it anyway because I hate to see those. 
Make sure you take the stockings off the knees of the chicken as well. Those yellow parts down there on the drumstick. Once you are done, give your chicken a wash and we're ready to season. Once the chicken is nicely washed, we are gonna set it aside and start to build our seasonings. Please make sure you clean your sink well after washing your chicken. So to make sure there is even seasoning on this bird, we're gonna start off with some extra virgin olive oil into the bowl. Now the oil is gonna serve as a carrier for the powdered spices. It's gonna make sure that it gets all over the chicken in an even way. Not clumping some places and not enough in others. So get your oil into that bowl, make sure you measure it accurately. Once we've done that, we're gonna start by adding some cloves of garlic to our oil. Didn't I tell you to buy a garlic press? Yeah, you're gonna get your money's worth out of it. Press those garlic cloves directly into the olive oil. Hey, Piri Piri. Yeah, so now we're gonna put our powder into the oil. Heaping tablespoons of this powder and put it into this oil and garlic mixture. Now, because we did not add any salt to this, we have to now add salt. Now I'm very cautious about salt because you could put it in, but you can't take it out. So make sure when you're using salt, you measure, measure, measure. Now because we're cooking a whole chicken, you're going to need more than normal. You're gonna probably use about two tablespoons of salt in here. That's fine, trust me. A whole chicken needs that amount of salt. I only use kosher salt or Himalayan pink salt. If you're using salt with a finer grain, you may need to use a tad bit more. I'm gonna take a spoon and combine this really well in the oil. The whole time you're using the back of your spoon to try to get any lumps out of the mix that might be there and try to get some of that salt also dissolved out into the oil. Now that our seasonings are ready, we're going to season our chicken. But first, we're gonna toss in some thinly sliced onions on top of the chicken. Don't worry, later on as we massage the chicken, we'll be breaking the onion pieces apart. Give the seasoning blend one more good mix and then you're going to spoon on about half of it onto the chicken. Now I hate getting seasonings under my nails, so I usually use a glove to protect my hands. First thing you see me doing there, I'm breaking the onion slices apart as much as I can. And then I'm just gonna rub that seasoning into this half of the bird. Now this is the interior part of the bird. I'm trying to get the seasonings into those cavities. That will matter. Then I'm gonna turn the bird on the skin side and I'm gonna use the remaining amount of seasonings on the outside of the bird. I'm gonna rub those in really, really well and try to get some of it even under the skin. Once you are done massaging this chicken, you're going to clean film your bowl and sit the chicken aside for about two hours. While the chicken is marinating, we're going to build our piri piri sauce. So I'm starting with some red chili peppers. These are a little spicy, but once they're blended out, they're not that spicy at all. So I'm adding five of them to my blender bowl but I'm also going to add Thai chilies to this to give it a little bit of heat and a little kick. If you cannot find Thai chilies, 
you can sub Thai chilies with habanero peppers or scotch bonnet peppers for heat and flavor. Once I've tossed in all the chilies, I'm going in with a shallot. I love shallots because they're so oniony and delicious. If you can't find shallots, you can use red onions. I'm also adding fresh basil, fresh cilantro, and garlic cloves. There's also a little bit of lemon juice that's going down in here. Now, you can add some red wine vinegar to this to sort of give it more flavor. But if you don't add red wine vinegar, that's completely fine. The lemon juice will provide enough acid for this sauce. The last thing that's going into our piri piri sauce is some extra virgin olive oil. Pouring that in there and that's really going to help the sauce to blend and come together. So the last ingredient is really actually some salt. Psych. So you're putting in just a heavy pinch of salt. Don't put too much in there. I took way too much out of the box. Throw it away. You have to season every single layer of your food, so make sure some salt gets into this, but not too much. If it's too salty, it'll be inedible, and nobody wants inedible peri-peri sauce. So you're only blending this for a few minutes because you want to leave it nice and chunky. Few seconds, not minutes, a few seconds. You want the pieces in here to remain pretty chunky. You don't want it to be sweet. You're gonna put the sauce into an airtight jar. Look at that. It smells insane. I can't wait till you make this. Pour the sauce into the jar and you're gonna set that aside because that is the star of the show, baby. This is going to make the Piri Piri chicken so delicious. Now it's time to add our chicken to our griddle. So now there are three ways you can cook this chicken. You can start it on the griddle and finish it in the oven. You can start it in the oven and finish it on the griddle. I actually prefer that way. I think the chicken gets more smoke that way. Or you can cook it entirely on the grill. If you're cooking it over hot coals on the grill, do it over indirect heat. So have the coals on one side and the chicken on the opposite side so that it will cook completely without burning. If you're cooking it over a gas grill, do the same thing. Cook it on indirect heat and make sure the chicken is fully cooked. Don't move it. Don't turn it too much if it's on a grill because the skin will tend to rip off if it's on a grill and we don't want that to happen. Here in the video, I'm showing you the method where I started it on my hot griddle pan and then I moved it and finished it in my oven. If you wanna try this method, it I've placed those onions from the marinade on a baking sheet and put some fresh thyme down on top of them. Then I sat each piece of chicken that was already on the griddle onto that baking sheet and I baked the chicken and finished it in the oven. Pay attention to the instructions on your recipe card for how long this should bake. The bake time will increase if you're using a larger chicken. Our chicken is ready and look at that. Your chicken should be completely golden brown and the skin should be nice and crispy once this is all finished. It's beautiful, it's delicious, and the flavor of it is going to get even more heightened when you add that piri piri sauce. Enjoy this, guys. Don't mind me, <laughs> I'm just eating this chicken like I've never eaten before. Happy cooking and happy eating foodies.